Uh, it was a wonderful time of fellowship together. Uh, so thank you all for uh, making soups. We had a uh, buggy full of uh, canned soups and uh, so on. Yeah, I called a buggy, I know. So I see people snickering, uh, but I, I can't help it. Uh, had a buggy full of stuff going to United Crescent Hill Ministries and to our little free pantry. So thank you all for your uh, generosity uh, on Sunday. Any good news to pass along as we start off this evening? Anything we... The, the weather. Amelia said the weather. Absolutely, yes. The sunshine is, uh, is beautiful. Yeah, um, gotten to enjoy that. Anything else before we move on? Debbie? A new puppy. What kind? Oh. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great, Debbie. Uh, thank you. Happy for that. <laughs> it's okay we'll we'll take it off of his paycheck this week that's okay yeah that's okay Any, anyone else anyone else before we get into birthdays all right anyone celebrating a birthday all quiet on that front uh, alice Adrian Eisenminger is celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday to her. All right. Anniversaries? No singing tonight. All right. All right. Any anniversaries next week? Next week's Ash Wednesday. We'll be in the chapel. Any anniversaries next week? Valentine's? Glenn? Glenn and Trudy? Okay. Next Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Very good. <laughs> 48. 48 years. Very good. Very good. 48 years. Well, uh, Glenn, we're going to sing to you because you're here, uh, e even if Trudy's not. So uh, Lou's making his way to the uh, piano. Were there other Valentine's anniversaries? Anyone next week? What'd you say, Louie? Birthdays, Birthdays next week. All quiet. All right. Happy anniversary. anniversary yeah many more uh valentine's day bake sale going on sunday in birchwood lobby after worship i uh, want to remind everybody of that melanie i think you have a word that you uh, would like to share about that yes just want to emphasize that it's always such a fun day but it is dependent on you to make it happen so we need people to bring donations of items that it could either be in the auction part or sold separately, and then we need lots of people to come bid and help make it a success. The money this year will be going to the general fund to help support all the wonderful things that we do. So thank you in advance for your participation. 
All right. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, next Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Uh, we'll be having our Ash Wednesday service over in the chapel. Uh, we'll be gathering for uh, dinner again at 5 o'clock, so do note that. Other announcements that we need to pass along, Debbie Brashear and Betty McEntee. I see your all's hands. Tonight we are having a social justice team meeting for anybody who wants to come because Joseph Caminiti is going to be here and he's going to talk about the refugee family and what we're going to do. We're going to need lots and lots of help. So if, if you'd like to come tonight, we'd love to have you. And I wanted to update you all on the uh, crisis aversion rights retention bill. A lot of people wrote postcards um, in early January, I believe. And uh, the bill has been filed at Senate, Senate Bill 13. And right now, um, it has not been assigned to a committee, which is kind of bothersome. Uh, we're uh, calling the legislative line and asking Senate leadership to please assign this bill to the um, Judiciary Committee because Senator Westerfield is the chair of that committee and he's a co-sponsor of the bill. So I just wanted to let you know we appreciate everybody who wrote postcards and we just hope that this year this will happen. Thank you. So Betty, if folks want to make a call right now to that legislative hotline, then the request would be for the Senate to please assign that to a committee. Is that correct? The judiciary. To the Judiciary Committee. And it's the Senate leadership. There are about four individuals. Okay. So for Senate leadership to assign that to a Judiciary Committee. Okay. Yeah. And that uh, legislative hotline, uh, if you don't already have it or know it, um, you can hop on Google and put Kentucky Legislative Hotline and it pops right up. Those people are very nice uh, when you call and very helpful. So uh, encourage you to, to make that call. Other folks, any other announcements that we want to make folks aware of? All right. Well, let's move on to prayer concerns this evening. Um, obviously, we continue to remember uh, the family of, of Dorothy Spur, who passed away early uh, yesterday morning, a longtime member here at Crescent Hill Baptist Church. Um, she uh, took a fall over the weekend. Uh, we found out about that right after worship on Sunday morning. And then what happened after that was actually a beautiful thing, and, and I would like folks to know what happened. Uh, her daughter-in-law emailed Andrea and I to tell the church that she took a fall. You may know that Dorothy's family, um, they don't live here in Louisville. They're out of town. Uh, and so the request was for church members to stop by if, if they wanted to, uh, to be with her. She was over in Baptist in palliative care. She wasn't responsive, and the time was short. Um, so Andrea went, I went, Margaret went, and over the next few hours from Sunday afternoon till she passed on Tuesday morning, from the first time we got word of her condition. She was never alone. And uh, I don't think it was by mistake that the scripture, the gospel lesson Sunday, was Jesus reaching his hands towards a sick woman, touching her, and lifting her up. And it's one thing to preach that on Sunday morning, but it's another thing to watch it unfold organically. And that is exactly what happened. Uh, and I want to, to thank everyone for the love and compassion 
that, that we showed her over those uh, hours. Um, I want to thank Margaret for your, your help in uh, rotating people in and out. Um, it was a lovely thing to watch happen. Her services will be here at the church uh, on Monday the 19th at 10 o'clock in the sanctuary. Uh, so uh, please come if you have an opportunity to be with us for that and continue to keep her family and loved ones um, in your prayers. I also want to add uh, that uh, I had a good visit yesterday with Dr. Henson. Uh, you may have noticed he wasn't with us in worship um, on Sunday morning. Uh, he's been experiencing some chest pain uh, over the past uh, few weeks. Um, had a good visit yesterday. He was feeling like himself. Um, I was telling some folks, I sat down in the chair beside of him, and then I probably didn't say three words the rest of the time I was there. It was just like we were in class. Uh, it, it was wonderful to see. Um, but uh, he, he is at home, and he'll still, I think, be coming to worship with us and everything. He expressed his thanks uh, to the tech team and everybody that makes our live stream happen uh, on Sunday morning. He was able to worship with us in that way. Um, Hospice is coming in to uh, discuss uh, best ways to care for him uh, during this time, but uh, just know that that's uh, happening with Dr. Henson and continue to keep him uh, in your prayers. And I suspect, uh, well, he said he would be here uh, Sunday. Um, so, and I, I expect he'll do his best to try to keep that commitment. So, uh, other folks to remember. Is, who's bringing him to church? I know Barb did that quite a bit. Okay, wonderful. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was with Gregory Roming last night. He and Chris had been with Dorothy right when she passed. But he told me that they think HB has had a stroke. Oh. And I've tried to get some clarity on that today, but I haven't heard back from Gregory yet. They didn't know he couldn't give me much information, but let's keep them in our prayers and um, just hope for the very best there. He's, I believe, 89. Mm. So, yeah. Um, well, I don't know that much about it, but my husband was, plays golf with HB every Wednesday, and he didn't come to golf. And while they were on the golf course, HB called in to try to get a game for tomorrow with somebody. <laughs> So I, the news that Louis said could be newer than my news, but Bob was home at 3, and he said HB was looking for a game. So whatever that means. All right. <clears throat> that sounds like HB. <laughs> Other prayer concerns. Alice? <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. <laughs> Seemed like I always have news of former members, but many of you uh, know and remember Carol Phipps, or also known as CJ, and she's struggled with health issues through the through many years. But um, she went to the her kidney specialist yesterday, and her results that came back were so low and her blood pressure was like 62 over 35. They called her cardiologist and they put her in the hospital immediately. They didn't have a room, so she's still in the hallway. But she said her heart rate is really low and her blood pressure and her kidneys and her oxygen level was like 67. And she's really concerned and I hope she's not alone while she's there in the hallway. I believe she's in Madison, Indiana, but she did request our prayers and I told her I would bring her name forward tonight. And so she's a wonderful artist and a wonderful human being. Thank you. Thank you. Pat? Um, I got a text from uh, Jeff Chandler and uh, 
former member here. Uh, Jeff's mother passed away yesterday in Clarksville, Tennessee, and he and Lisa were on their way there uh, when they got word that she had passed. And so he's, of course, struggling with not being there, even though he's trying the best he could to get there, and also just the normal grief of losing one's mother. Thank you, Pat. Rhonda. Well, I'm going to start with a disclaimer in that nothing happened at pickleball. <laughs> but we do have a pickleball player who will be having knee replacement surgery in the morning. So uh, her desire to be back on the pickleball court has prompted her to do this. Uh, she's been holding off for a long time, and she is so ready to do it that she went ahead and scheduled her other knee replacement eight weeks after this. So keep Patty in your prayers. Uh, I think her surgery is like at six in the morning. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, as we uh, pray together tonight, I would like us to spend a few moments um, in silence together uh, as we hold all of these intercessions close to our hearts. Um, and then I'd like to center our prayers through reading some of uh, Psalm 27. Um, Dorothy's uh, daughter-in-law said that was uh, her favorite uh, scripture text. And I'd like to center our prayers through that scripture tonight. Would you bow with me? God of mercy and grace, we lift all of our intercessions to you this night, and we ask that you would hold it close to your spirit as we pray these words from the scriptures. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in God's temple. For God will hide me in the shelter in the day of trouble. God will conceal me under the cover of God's tent. God will set me high on a rock. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Amen. Well, we are thrilled uh, to have some special guests with us this evening. Uh, Brian Henderson uh, is no stranger uh, to many of us here at Crescent Hill. Uh, Brian is the executive director of the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists, also known as AWAB. Uh, and Brian has just concluded uh, tenure as pastor at First Baptist Church 
in Denver, Colorado, a sister American Baptist congregation. And he is now, we're excited to say, uh, the full-time uh, executive director uh, of the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists. Uh, Brian has been working here today and will be here tomorrow uh, with Janet, who's also uh, on staff at AWAB, our own Janet Cole. Uh, and uh, joining them uh, is Natalie Ajo. Uh, Natalie uh, is the development director at AWAB. Uh, she came on board last year at some point. Yeah, in June of last year, I think, uh, and she came from Wake Forest. She was at Wake Forest prior to that, uh, and we are excited to have them with us this evening, uh, and they're going to share about some of AWAB's work and tremendous growth, and I ask you to welcome them as they come forward. Can I use this, too, in a minute? Yeah. Is, that right? Is it on? Good evening, everyone. Good to be back here at Crescent Hill. In some ways for me, I feel like I'm coming home to Crescent Hill Baptist Church, and I am grateful for, for you and for your commitment to the work of ministry that happens here and for your commitment to the LGBTQ plus community uh, that, that, um, that is very much a part of your ministry. I, I want to say a shout out uh, to Alan. Uh, Alan is a past board member of, of AWAB. Jordan is a, Pastor Jordan is a current board member, uh, and so we're grateful. Chris uh, has helped AWAB with, with tech work from behind the scenes, and Pat uh, every so often is on the He's in the background when Janet or I are on the phone together, and he's given his wisdom every now and then. So uh, it is, we, we should add that to your paycheck, Janet, of course. Yeah, all right, good. Um, it's just, it's good to, good to be here. Uh, Jordan and Andrea have been very gracious in allowing Janet and Natalie and I to to take over the library for a couple of days as we've been doing staff meetings. It's a new new season for us at AWAB uh, with me being in the full-time capacity. Janet uh, is with us in a part-time capacity. Natalie technically came to AWAB as the first ever full-time employee of the organization. And so we're just glad to be able to get some work done and some planning put together for this upcoming year. And I'm gonna say more about that planning in just a, in a little bit. Uh, it is Wednesday night, and it's been a long time since I have participated in a Wednesday night meal and program like this. The first church that I served in Pennsylvania had Wednesday night gatherings such as you have here at Crescent Hill. Uh, the two churches that I've served since then have not, and so it's, it's just good to have a Wednesday night experience and a wonderful meal uh, and some good fellowship. Great to hear you share, and isn't it powerful how once we begin to think about who do we want to share about in the, in the context and spirit of prayer, how many folk come to mind? Uh, current folk and former folk and folk for whom we, we care. So thank you uh, for the spirit that you have shared tonight. It has touched my heart in a meaningful, meaningful way. Uh, it is Wednesday night, and so the churches that I did participate in, or the church that I participated in with a Wednesday night event, always had scripture. And so, Jordan, thank you for sharing from Psalm 23. I'd like to share uh, just two quick verses. Uh, since I am full time with AWAB and I don't get to preach every Sunday anymore, which at one level is wonderful, uh, <laughs> at another level I do miss it. So, I've got an opportunity to read two scriptures tonight, or two verses, which I'd like to do. Uh, they're verses that you know so well. From Genesis chapter 9, it's the story of Noah and the ark and the flood, and we all know that. We've heard that story ever since we've been in Sunday school as kids, I suspect. But uh, here are two, two verses, um, verse, verses 12 and 13 from Genesis 9. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. I have set my bow in the clouds. And I'd like to suggest tonight, in just a couple of minutes of reflection, 
that um, we still, as people today, you here at Crescent Hill Baptist Church, we still need to help God create some bows, or if you will, some rainbows. Whether you fly a rainbow flag, whether you wear a rainbow hat, we still need to see rainbows today. I'd like to read to you some words by a friend of mine whose name is Shelby. Shelby lives in San Diego, which by all counts, much like this part of Louisville, is a, is a pretty welcoming and affirming city or town, if you will. Shelby reflects with us in these words. I harbor a deep affection for my city, San Diego, a place that has, since my arrival eight years ago, granted me the illusion of sanctuary, yet today has jarringly reminded me that even amid the sanctuary, lurking shadows wait to transform joy into dread. Following an afternoon suffused with laughter, tacos, and camaraderie at Barrio Logan's vibrant street fair, one of my friends was targeted as the victim of a vicious hate crime in the heart of Chicano Park. Four men, one wielding a knife, ambushed him in a place as mundane as a public restroom. His physical injuries, a fractured cheekbone, a swelling on his forehead as large as a baseball, assorted aches that mar his body are but the surface wounds of a deeper, more insidious trauma. He wore a rainbow hat, a simple adornment that made him a target. They tore it from him, trampled it underfoot, but what they truly sought to extinguish was not the fabric, but the freedom it symbolized. He was marked for violence, not merely for his attire, but for the audacity to be openly gay. His very existence deemed a transgression in their eyes. As I confront the bitter aftermath of this incident, I cannot help but see it as a symptom of a larger malaise. This is what transpires when society opens the floodgates of bigotry, allowing the torrent to flow freely, unabated by the dam of reason or compassion. Recent years have seen an emboldening of anti-gay speech from the highest echelons of power giving tacit permission for such poison to seep into our daily lives, manifesting in the cruelest of ways. And so, it becomes achingly clear, this is why we cannot afford even the smallest trickle of hatred, for once the floodgates are opened, the deluge is indiscriminate in its destruction. My friend Shelby reminds me that we have to keep helping God create rainbows so that more and more folk know that it is okay to be who we are, to be who you are, to be who they are. So, Crescent Hill Baptist Church, thank you for helping to make some rainbows. Thank you for being a rainbow. Thank you for flying some rainbows. And uh, before we're finished, Natalie and I are going to invite you, if you would like, even to, to help us with some rainbow making. We might even invite you to join a rainbow circle, perhaps. So what I'd like to do uh, now is transition and just give you a quick sense of AWAB. No, many of you know who AWAB is and where it's been and what it's about, but for those of you that don't, I'm going to just walk us through very quickly. This, I'm going to try not to make it boring. I'm going to try to keep us engaged. And Jordan tells me if I switch this like this and walk away like this, it'll still work. Good. All right. So uh, AWAB, the Association of Welcoming and Affirming Baptists, I like to tell folk about Crescent Hill Baptist Church. Wherever I go around the country, I, I like to let folk know that AWAB's technical office address, Alan, is here at Crescent Hill Baptist Church. And Crescent Hill Baptist Church has graciously given us a closet. It's a wonderful closet. It's a big closet. <laughs> We share space with the HVAC system, um, but AWAB gets to come out of the closet every so often at Crescent Hill Baptist, and we are just delighted for the space that you have graciously provided us. AWAB, 
and we lost power. No, there we go. Uh, AWAB uh, is a network of welcoming and affirming congregations, organizations, and individuals who are willing to go on record as welcoming and affirming of all persons. And when we say all, we mean all. And historically, AWAB uh, has been committed to welcoming and affirming ministry within Baptist life. Our vision is that there will be a day that will come of faith when no one will feel excluded from God's love in Jesus Christ because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. Our purpose is to provide support, education, theological expression to Baptist congregations and organizations. Just shake it. Thank you, Alice. There we go. <laughs> Alice, it worked. Hey, let, <laughs> it's like the... It's let's like, let's it, switch it, Let's switch microphones. Let's switch mics. All right, let's do that. Shake it. There we go. All right. All right. I'm going to remember, Alice, we're going to have to dance later, and we're going to just shake it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, provide support, education, theological expression to Baptist congregations and organizations as they become welcoming and affirming. We seek to strengthen the connections among congregations, to empower them to stand up and support for LGBTQ plus people. We want to offer support and families, uh, offer support to families and individuals experiencing difficulties, reconciling their orientation and gender identity. And we seek to advocate for a faithful Baptist voice in support of LGBTQ plus full human and civil rights. For those of you that don't know, uh, we have uh, many folk in the last couple of years that have joined our board. Uh, I, think, I think, Alan, the board is a bit bigger uh, today than it was about six or seven years ago. Uh, Bob Siddig is our chair. Uh, you can see uh, these folk here represent us from all over the US. We've got board members in 13 altogether uh, in all four time zones. Our staff, as has been introduced already, is comprised of myself and Natalie and Janet. We are hoping by March to have a communications coordinator in place. Um, and uh, we, this week during our staff meetings, uh, we went through uh, applicants and have narrowed our search down to three individuals. So hopefully uh, by March, uh, we'll have that position uh, full, and I'll say more about staff in a little bit. Uh, AWAB has grown uh, in the last four, almost four and a half years. You can see the number of churches that have joined. Uh, the on the, th the the third column, all the way down at the bottom, uh, there are five churches that are in bold. You can't really tell, but they are beginning with Lime Rock Baptist Church in Lincoln, Rhode Island, all the way down to Fellowship Baptist Church in Americus, Georgia. Uh, and, the th and the three churches in between there uh, just recently uh, came into our membership. And the day after our board meeting, when we affirmed those five for membership, we'd already received another application, and since then, another. And we have reason to think that there are three or four more uh, coming into, uh, into our inboxes in the next week or so. Uh, and so at this point, AWAB has 161 member churches. And our hope by the end of the year is that we will be closer to 200. Uh, this gives you a quick snapshot of AWAB membership in comparison to our larger Baptist family. And I know that Crescent Hill has ABC as well as CBF connections. You can see that ABC has about 5,000 congregations. CBF currently has about 1,800. Uh, and then you also have some connections through your congregation with the Alliance of Baptist. There are 100, about 130 uh, Alliance of Baptist congregations. And so if you put those numbers together, you can say that less than 3% are AWAB members. So our hope is to continue to see that percentage go up. The next few slides I'm going to show you gives a sense of the progress that has been made within Baptist life um, in, the, in the area of being welcoming and affirming. Um, back in 2018, at a national conference called Space for Grace, hosted by the American Baptist Home Mission Societies, uh, we uh, gathered together for a plenary session one evening. It was a, we were singing, and there was scripture, and there were speakers, and then we sang that hymn that you have probably sung here at Crescent Hill, For Everyone Born, for gay or for straight, a place at the table, a covenant shared, a welcoming space, a rainbow, 
or race and gender and color, for gay and for straight, the chalice of grace. Now, you know those words, and, and they're probably familiar to you. But if you can picture at a national gathering of American Baptists being able to sing that hymn with those lyrics, it was, there were tears throughout the auditorium because there was a time when folk didn't think it ever would be possible to sing such an inclusive hymn at a national event. So I like to say that we are definitely making progress within our Baptist families. David Gregg is executive minister of ABC Metro Chicago. Uh, he is an openly gay man. And so as we think about the progress that we've made, or sometimes when we think about are we making progress, I like to say, yes, we are. Because even within the, the influential positions of our denomination, such as the role that an executive minister plays, we have representation of LGBTQ plus folk. And then in 2019, I was with a group of Baptist pastors at a retreat down in Orlando, Florida. And one afternoon, we had some free time, and someone said, hey, let's go visit the Pulse Nightclub Memorial. And so I show this picture because there's a group of us pastors. A few of the pastors are pastors of AWAB, Welcoming and Affirming Congregations. A few of them are not. One of those churches, since we gathered, has actually joined AWAB. And so I want to be able to say across the country that there is far more we can do together than any of us can do on our own. And when we can gather, even if we see things differently than someone else, particularly when it comes to being welcoming and affirming or not, we can still, as Baptists, stand together and do more than we can on our own. Thinking of AWAB and the impact that it's had, uh, over the last year, we recognize that the welcoming and affirming movement within Baptist life has been coming up on 50, came up on 50 years of ministry, starting back in 1973. Technically, in 1993 is when AWAB was formed. Uh, we commissioned Delane Tu, uh, who is a now retired professor of history from Samford University in Birmingham, to write our history. And so she is currently in the process of doing that. She is on the final chapter. And our hope is before the end of this year, uh, we will be able to present to you and to our AWAB family across the country, finding a home among Baptists, the 50-year history of welcoming and affirming ministry in Baptist life. And so we are excited about this project and how it is coming together. Uh, what does AWAB do? Uh, we do many things. Uh, one of the things that we do on a, that we've done on a biannual basis, and we are transitioning to an annual basis, is the presentation of awards. And so historically, we've given the Barbara McNair Award and the Randall R. Mixon Award. Uh, the McNair Award goes to a layperson, and the Mixon Award goes to, uh, goes to a clergy person. And so you can see past recipients here. And before I finish, I'm going to invite you to visit our website, awab.org, and you can look more at those, you can look at those lists more closely and see if you know any event, if you know anyone on, on those lists. Again, what does AWAB do? We try to do as much as we can. Uh, during 2020, uh, we were able to reallocate some of our budget because some of our travel budget because we weren't traveling, if you remember, much during 2020. And we were able to provide grants to several, organ to several churches and to an individual uh, as they were doing uh, ministry in a welcoming and affirming way in their own contexts. We also provide opportunities for education. We have had a series that we've run a couple of times based on this book, Sinless Sex, A Challenge to Religions, which I highly recommend by Bill Staten. Uh, this has been a continuing ed course uh, that has provided an, uh, individuals a chance to come together, uh, individuals who represent the LGBTQ plus community and those who are allies to think theologically about human sexuality and what it means and how it is. Uh, and, it's, and it's created a space, a safe space, for some individuals even to share the beginning stages of, the, stages of their own coming out journeys. Uh, AWAB also provides and offers an annual lectureship. Uh, two years ago, we had our inaugural lectureship with Cody Sanders. Last year in Dallas, 
uh, Texas at Wilshire Baptist Church. Susan Shaw lectured on uh, truth and lies at the foot of the cross, the church and God's LGBTQ plus children. And I am proud to say that AWAB is expanding, as Jordan hinted at earlier. Uh, we are in the process of living out a three-year strategic plan. Uh, our organization is seeking to expand its staff, our programming, and our board. Uh, in 2024, um, our approved budget is 400,000. Uh, we anticipate this growing to over a half a million to meet our strategic plan goals and objectives. Uh, we'll grow our membership, expand and deepen our programming to address the needs of member and non-member churches, and proactively reach out to congregations who could benefit from AWAB support. Um, the strategic plan has had, first, the hiring of a full-time director of development, uh, which Natalie is filling for us so amazingly. Uh, and then the executive director position uh, was transitioned to a full-time role. And then at the end of this year, we are hoping to bring on a program coordinator. And then in 2025, uh, our strategic plan has us adding a membership coordinator. So we will, um, God willing, and the support of many folks such as yourselves, uh, will be an organization of six individuals uh, providing support to our Baptist churches across the country. Uh, AWAB always has swag. In fact, if, if Crescent Hill is in a special place, because if you want swag or need swag, you just need to talk to Janet, and she'll go up to our office, I mean our closet, and she can get you quite a bit if you would like. Uh, so so we, are, we are delighted to be able to provide churches across the country swag for pride events and any other events at which they'd like to show off their own rainbows of sorts. And of course, you know where we are. And then I'm going to wrap up by inviting you, if you would like, uh, to help us um, as we help God um, create rainbows. Uh, we have a rainbow circle that is a monthly, a monthly uh, program for support that you can join. It comes with some special opportunities and, and gifts. Uh, you, can, you can find out more by using the QR code. There's some information at the table as you came into the fellowship hall tonight. And Natalie is going to say a little bit more about the Rainbow Circle. But on behalf of our board, on behalf of our staff, uh, thank you, Crescent Hill Baptist Church, for being the rainbow makers that you are. And each time we hang a rainbow or we show off our rainbow colors, it might seem like just a trivial thing. And yet in reality, um, we are making space for more people to know that it's OK to be who you are. And lest we think that um, we have, we've, we've come far enough, may we remember my friend Shelby and his friend uh, who reminds us that as much as we want to celebrate our progress, we still have work, rainbow-making work to do. Natalie. Thank you. Someone in charge of all this. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, Crescent Hill, for being an AWAP church. Does anybody know when you joined? Fourteen? Twenty fourteen? There you go. That's good. That's good. That's to be applauded. Um, anybody here a Rainbow Circle donor already? Jordan is. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Well, um, piggybacking off of what Brian was just saying, um, just this past week, uh, the PRRI organization released a survey um, on different attitudes um, among generations on all kinds of things within the church. But one of the statistics that stood out to me is that among adult Gen Z, which would be our college students um, up to 27, 28, 28 percent of them already identify as being LGBTQ+. Thankfully, I'm hopeful that we're looking into a future where our queer folks will not be marginalized. But we still have a long way to go. And I think as we think about where we've been in the past 30 to 50 years, 
we've really focused on the why should a church be welcoming and affirming. We're grateful for pioneers like Crescent Hill that have shown the why. And of course, we still have many, many more to go. We're only at 3% of potential Baptist churches. But I think our next question is really how are we welcoming and affirming? Is it enough that we hang out a rainbow flag or that we hire ministers who identify in the LGBTQ community? Or are there more things that we as affirming churches need to be doing? And those are the resources that we want to be able to provide. Um, and we need your support to be able to get there. I think that um, some of the clear answers come from the hard work that our board did um, in putting together our three-year strategic plan. And let me just highlight a couple to you. We want to be able to help ch churches to adapt to their changing cultural and social context related to LGBTQ issues. Here's an easy one. Pronouns. What do we do with that? Do you know when to use them and how to use them and in what context? And yet you're a progressive church. And so how can we be a resource to help all of us change? Uh, my 16-year-old son is bi and his group started talking about pansexual. And I was like, I don't even know what word you just said. Like, explain that to me. <laughs> so we need help. Um, all of us need help in understanding our changing context. I think this is crucial, and let me just name it, that we collectively have failed to explore church trauma and appropriate responses to healing and hope. It's a false belief that it's all, that all we need to do is lay out the welcome mat, because the reality is for the majority of LGBTQ folks in America, Going near a church is traumatic. And we have to own that we've played a role in that and figure out ways that we are the rainbow, the bridge to that healing and hope. And then offer ways of wellness and positive mental health. We can bolster our relationships with our local LGBTQ community and organizations, as you all are already doing, but particularly in a state like Kentucky where we know that folks are being intentionally harmful and causing trauma. And so how can AWAB help fill in the gap to provide resources and support for you all, um, particularly for those who live in our more progressive, shall we say progressive states? Because we know that even in San Diego and in a state like California, there's still trauma being, ca being caused. So how can we be a support to provide churches with those resources? And finally, my favorite, we want to emphasize the continuous need to celebrate the sacredness among us all. Pride is a wonderful experience. I hope that you all have participated. But that's not the only day that we celebrate our sacredness. And so how can we find additional ways um, to make sure that it is a part of our regular rhythm and habit that we celebrate? We have recently um, released a campaign. Um, it's not really about the fundraising, it's about the action behind it. This year's Ash Wednesday is on Valentine's Day. Does anybody know the tension more than the queer community of living with death and love at the same time? So we've um, issued a campaign to allow folks to leave a memorial or an honor of someone who has shaken the dust from those who have not valued their life or in memorializing those who haven't been able to face the trauma that's been put upon them. And in our reflection of that, we were reminded of some of our fellow AWAB churches that put glitter in their ashes for Ash Wednesday. Such a simple act, but such a tangible reminder of celebrating this sacredness. So how can we collectively, with all of the brilliant imagination that we have in our AWAB churches, come up with these kinds of ideas together and then share and collaborate with one another? 
So I'll close with saying that if a church like Crescent Hill finds that you've got additional funding, we'd love for you to help us produce some of these resources. And certainly for those of you that have the capacity for an individual gift, we have the option of one-time gifts, but we'd love for you to join the Rainbow Circle. This was our attempt at saying collectively we're all a part of this rainbow when it goes around and around. And so your recurring gift is one that you can give um, to us continuously. Uh, I think we're at 110 Rainbow Circle members from something that just started two years ago. And we hope to be coming back to you. You know, maybe we'll be back here in a year for our next staff retreat and we'll be able to say that we've already passed 200. Um, rainbow circle, circle donors. But no matter, we just want to emphasize to you all, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting us as staff, um, and thank you for supporting the LGBTQ community here in Louisville um, and in your congregation. And please don't uh, be a stranger. Let us know how we can continue to support you all. Thanks. Work. Any quest any questions that you all have for oh yeah, shake it, shake it off. Uh, any questions y'all have for Brian or Natalie while they're here with us? No questions from Crescent Hill Baptist Church. Never in my dreams, when Brian and I came here in 1988, would I be witnessing this time with you all. As we said when we were trying to um, make me a deacon back in 1999, um, you all had seen me as I ministered to other families. You had seen Brian and I, Sunday after Sunday, and we've just always found the love and acceptance. It started with the Sunday school class. Of course, it took us 10 years to join because we didn't want to be outed. But Solidarity welcomed us in after Brian gave a talk one night about the AIDS unit at Linden Lane. And through the years, um, we just continue to feel such love. And we've talked at this table tonight about family and about token families. And definitely, this is our token family. Thank you, Greg. Margaret? This isn't a question about AWAP, but I got a, I, we have a 42 year old son who lives in Austin, Texas, and he's an artist, he's in a community of artistic people and has lots and lots of friends. And he texted me the other day out of the blue, and he, I got no response from my response, but he said, have you ever heard the term church hurt? And he has a lot of friends who have been church hurt. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Well, I want to thank Brian and Natalie for being with us. They'll be uh, working uh, here tomorrow as well, and uh, we're so glad that uh, they're here uh, along with Janet. Uh, uh, so glad uh, for uh, just being able to uh, partner with AWAB and offer you the uh, the gift of this building uh, and even the closet. Uh, <laughs> and we're grateful for your partnership. I will say, just uh, as we get ready to depart from this place, um, another um, uh, part of AWAB's mission um, is uh, working uh, with churches who aren't Crescent Hill Baptist Church. 
quite frankly. Churches and even denominations who aren't quite there yet. Um, and that is, uh, I think, a, a growing edge uh, of, of AWAB's uh, mission and, and will be an important part of our mission um, as uh, f the future unfolds. So, all right. Well, it's been good to be together this evening. May we go in peace and be good to one another. God bless you. Good night.